So you have a little marijuana in there. Uh, none, just just uh, the remnants are in there right now. So he went over there, apparently confronted this guy who was on campus. Didn't specifically see him at the box, but saw him in the area of the box. They had words, he got confrontational and jumped. Who called us? Yep, and uh, that was the video, and I just want to add there's a bunch of jump cuts because this is a three-minute version compared to the 22. So if you're just wondering why there's a bunch of cuts, that's why. So. Well, what I wanted to say is, is that we uh, we only wanted to tease them. We didn't want them to see all of that what happened. You want to find out what happened with that case and with about three other ones that uh, Officer Dodge and the stops that he made, uh, you'll have to watch the whole video on Friday. So in the end, that guy was arrested, So and he went to jail. But uh, amazing job, uh, and for the record, Officer Dodgen hasn't even seen the three minute, let alone the 22 minute version. So uh, he, was, he was watching more intently than anybody else. So <laughs> uh, we're really, really pleased. Uh, thank you both, uh, incredible job. And uh, as you can see, the rest of the, a lot of the departments back here too, because they haven't seen it yet either. It's gonna be new to everybody on Friday, so. So Friday after 5 p.m., YouTube. And where are the autograph session going to be? Well, oh, and we didn't want to, we, we, actually, it was interesting is, is that we had a great deal of discussion about doing it tonight, uh, but we decided to wait till Friday because tonight is going to be all about National Night Out. Uh, so if we did it on tonight, it would be lost in the social media world. So we'll wait until Friday. Okay. Public comment. Under Government Code Section 54954.3, Members of the public may address the City Council on non-agenda items. The public comment section is for the City Council to receive comments, except for brief responses to questions. No discussion or action may be taken on any item that is not listed on the agenda. Please limit comments to a maximum of five minutes. Speaker cards are located on the table inside the entrances to the Council Chambers. Once completed, forward the speaker card to the clerk. Those persons wishing to speak on an item scheduled on the agenda will be given an opportunity to do so at the time that item is being considered. I don't have any other comments. Any public comment? Okay, moving on. Reports by city council members on regional boards, commissions, and committees. The city council that we bring back a uh, suggestion I made on um, creating a stop sign policy, kind of a standard procedure right now um, we do a great job with staff, but it's not written down. So this would be an opportunity for the citizens if they request a stop sign, it would be a, a, a standard procedure that would give them an answer of whether it's warranted, not warranted, where it's at in the, uh, in the process. A lot of cities have done it. So I'd like to see if we can get that on a future council meeting, if that's agreeable. Do we need a motion or can I just? And, at the end okay. of the meeting. Yeah. At the end of the at meeting. The end of the meet okay. All right. Don't let me forget. Okay. Right. And finally, in case anybody doesn't already know, um, I'm basically retired so from my day job. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mark? Uh, actually, most of my committees were uh, buys this month, so I have nothing as far as the committees. But as you said, Coffee with a Cop was a great event. Uh, just came back from vacation over on the uh, east side of the of the uh, the nation, and believe you me, these fires are having a severe effect. Yes, not just in California, mm -hmm. Nevada, Utah, Arizona, everybody's getting hit by the smoke. Yes, um, I do have one thing I'd like to put out there. We have one of our local businesses who is making runs with everything from toiletries to food, water, whatever is needed. He's taking donations down at the. Uh, Old Time Diner. Thank you, old the Old Time, time diner. diner, right. And so if anybody can help out with that, please do so. They need yep. all the help we can give them. Okay, Kurt? Um, 
my schedule here recently has been extremely busy and I haven't um, had the time to make uh, my STA meeting. So Mark as the alternate will be taking over as the representative on STA. Okay. Page, is that it? That's it. Okay. Thank you, um, well, we had our safety committee meeting, and one of the things with the presentation that just came out was the safety committee's main purpose is to um, advise council, and they also brought up putting, and I asked you guys all to drive down on 4th Street a while ago, um, just crosswalk warning signs, and thank you, Public Works, for putting in speed limit signs down there. We appreciate that. So on a future agenda, um, we'd like staff to present um, the crosswalk signs in the in the in front of Bar what did I say Barsetti's no Brewsters and Barsetti's maybe on oh, D and Fourth and D and E was it D and E Mark yeah I think so yeah. so um, we want you guys to consider that which is one of the purposes of the safety committee and then we have the balloon festival coming up apparently um, they've sold lots of tickets and shop local meeting I went to. Um, we had a cleanup day, and the chief came, chief came to the beautification meeting, and we were trying to figure out where we're gonna clean up next, and McFarland Street was brought to our attention, and we didn't, the beautification committee doesn't have to do that because chief got some people out there to get that done for us, so thank you so much. So Gene and I met with um, Bill Spaulding. He's the new superintendent of the high school district. So we caught him up to date on uh, projected growth <laughs> and uh, some of the projects in the, in the works. I attended library authority. Um, we finalized negotiations, uh, um, entered into the contract with the library employees, finished the contract for that. Um, attended sip and snack at the MAC. It was. I guess it was their most successful ever. Anyway, um, otherwise, there was something I was just thinking of. I'll, it'll come back to me. Okay, oh, and this morning, Gene and I met with John Costa from PG&E regarding, and actually, this af if you get it, um, this afternoon after we met with him, we received an email from the League of Cities um, regarding, um, what's the word he used, inverse, it was inverse condemnation on, uh, uh, I guess, the electrical uh, power lines. You know, so if everybody will take the time to read that, our, read that. League is asking um, for a, a, um, a is asking for an opinion on it. Um, PG&E and, and disagrees with the league's opinion, <laughs> disagrees with the league's recommendation. So it was kind of interesting because I had never heard of reversed condemnation. Reverse. And then that afternoon, right Reverse. after we met with him. We get this whole thing from the league. So if you'll read is, that Is this property today. owners uh, claiming inverse because they have power lines on, on across their property? Because I guess if there's a fire caused by, by a down power line, pg e can be held liable yes. for that yep. for that fire. And they're wanting to, um, there's some legislation to reverse that. I see. To make, to make the, uh, to make them not liable. If they're follow, if they're keeping their, keeping trees cut back and doing all the things that they need to do that they wouldn't be. So, so it's just kind of- The problem I have there is with the PUC, they don't allow them to trim trees in certain cases, and that leads to uh, hazardous conditions. So it is just, if everybody will read it, it was kind of interesting, Good. and then that we received it. Okay, moving on. Information consent <clears throat> calendar. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved by Council Member Campion, second by Council Member Lawson. <coughs> Call for the vote. Vice Mayor, <coughs> Vice Mayor Cruz. Aye. Council Member Malson. Aye. Council Member Campion. Aye. Council Member Lampson. Aye. Mayor Hewer. Aye. Motion passes, 5 0 vote. Okay. Treasurer's Office. Treasurer report for the period ending June 2018. Mr. Farrell. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do not have a video to show you here this evening. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that video was, was pretty awesome. I, I can't wait for the 22 minute version. It truly did look, it was professional, it truly looked like the cops show. I mean, I know you can't use that, okay? But anyway, that uh, before you, you have the treasurer's report for June 2018. 
Um, this is the one meeting in the year where I can come back and say, uh, here's how much interest we earned for the last fiscal year. And the fiscal year 1718, we did earn $621,333.07 in interest. In comparison, the previous fiscal year, we were just slightly above 400,000. So yes, there was a $200,000 gain, but you also got to remember in this past fiscal year, interest rates went up, okay? So I didn't become a, a better treasurer in the last year, it's just interest rates went up. Um, to give you a, a couple of examples, uh, LAIF, uh, as of the end of June, was at an interest rate of 1.85. Well, again, the previous fiscal year, they were more like 0.9. So they, it went up approximately 1%. 1, 1%. Our CD that uh, matured, that was at uh, Farmers and Merchants Bank in May, it matured on May the 12th, we were earning uh, 0.95 because at the time when we took out the CD, that was above the going rate. Well, so that 0.95 is now at 2.25, okay? So it, through, you know, negotiation and interest rates rising, that's, that's what happens. Our weighted uh, average interest rate ending month of June was, was 1.90%. So as interest rates go up, for us as a city, that's good because we invest that money. Um, as individuals, if we're going out to buy a new house or refinance our house, that's not good because then we have a higher interest rate that we have to pay. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. In, uh, in a, our local bank, we have right now approximately uh, 8720000 So we do uh, invest locally wherever we can. And with that, I'll ask that uh, the council approve the treasurer's report as of June 2018. I've got one quick comment. The priorities for the investments that you do for the city are safety, liquidity, and interest. That is correct. That's correct, yeah. yeah. Yep. That safety, liquidity, yield. Yep, so. Absolutely. And, and that has never changed. <laughs> Do we have a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Motion by Vice Mayor Cruz, second by Council Member Campion. Call for the vote. Vice Mayor Cruz? Aye. Council Member Malson? Aye. Council Member Campion? Aye. Council Member Hugh? Aye. Thank, thank you. I totally blew that one. <laughs> Councilman Lampson, Mayor Hewer. Aye. Aye. Motion. Motion passes a 5-0 vote. Communication? I have none. Communication. City Clerk's Report, League of California Cities Conference, designation of voting delegate. Right. Every year the League of California Cities holds their annual conference. This year it's September, September 12th to the 14th. At the annual conference is their annual business meeting. The City Council is allowed to designate a voting delegate. Um, they annual business meeting will have two resolutions they're considering, which is included a brief summary in the agenda report. At this time, City Council can select. Um, I have two members going, Mayor Hewer, Council Member Lamson, if they so desire, and also give direction on either one of the resolutions included in the packet. What does Council's desire? I was on the League Resolution Committee one year, and it's, it's fun. So, Lori, would you like to be the designee? I figured you'd want to be the designee. I'm fine with that. Um, I'm staying till Saturday, so I'm okay with that because um, it is late on Friday. But yeah, so am I. Yeah, that's fine. You can do it. Do we have a motion? Do we have a motion? I move that Lori Hewer be the League of California Cities designee. Is that what you want? Second. Motion by Council Member Lampson, second by Vice Mayor Cruz. Call for the vote. Vice Mayor Cruz? Aye. Council Member Malson? Aye. Council Member Campion? Aye. Council Member Lampson? Aye. Mayor Hewer. Good job. Do we have any input regarding the resolutions? Uh, reading both of them, I think my personal opinion is we should be voting yes on both. They, both of them benefit this, this community. Both of them, yes. Both of them are to uh, ask the league to look at, uh, see if we can strengthen our local control which the state yes. keeps wanting to take away from us. So I agree with Mark, absolutely. Along those lines, do we, do they, are they asking for letters of support as well? I, 
didn't I, see I that. I don't think so. This is just voting. They, they've got a number of letters, I think, to get the resolution okay. on, the, on the committee meeting right. okay. already. Okay. I agree. Okay. That's fine. So we don't need a vote on that, do we? That's just direction. The consensus, I think, would yeah. be fine. Okay. Comments by staff? Anything else, Spirit? Sean? Mark? Do we know? I just noticed Wait, there's an alternate. Question, Chris, did, did you hear if the board approved the HCP or is the hearing still going? I was going to give you an update on that. Uh, so if Mark doesn't mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, oh, I'm sorry, I, I thought. The, I South the, I, South that, that's the, the South Sacramento Habitat Conservation Plan is being presented to the SAC County Board tomorrow night. Well, tomorrow night, okay. And right. the way it's being presented is the county board can act on it. I think staff was thinking it would be continued and approved at the next following meeting, but it is a special meeting. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, it is getting really close to the finish line. Uh, Planning Commission for Galt recommended approval for it in June. Uh, the Sacramento County Planning Commission recommended approval. It will then go, after the Sacramento County uh, Board hears it, it will go to Rancho Cordova for approval. And I'm expecting it to come before you uh, in October uh, for approval. Good. Good. Thank you. Sorry about that, Mark. Okay. Back to Mark. Do you have anything, Mark? <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Breaking news, SMUD, just before the meeting started, SMUD let us know that they were going to have a scheduled power outage within several blo blocks around Lincoln and C Street tonight between 10 and 3. So if any of our citizens can hear this and get it out, it just happened a few minutes before I wow. came here. So Do they send notices out to, the empl to, to homeowners or people living in the area? I do not know their policy. But they let us know, public works. Yeah. So. They do have a phone tree. Sometimes it works. Sometimes. Should we post that? Most of the time not. Not so late breaking news. I'm still painting the town. <laughs> painting it green, OK. It, it, will, uh, it will last for another few days, probably early in the next week. But we should be done and out of the way of school um, um, before it starts on the 16th next mm -hmm. Thursday. So. Uh, we're getting really close, completing it. Why are they putting up all these pads? Excuse me? Why are they putting up all these bike pads? Would you like to make, if, if you want to ask a question or you have a public comment, I can make arrangements for that. We don't, okay. okay. So let's finish and then I'll, I'll uh, allow you to have a public comment, okay? Thank you. You want to go ahead and come up now? And if you'll say your name for the record. Rebecca Myers. Okay. Um, what is going up with all these bike paths everywhere? I heard it's $6 million to put these in. And they're really making a lot of emphasis on them. Not to mention, you're riding right next to the cars on the streets. And that can't be safe because the cars to pull in this park, they can just cut right in front of you and stuff. So I, I just don't I, I I just don't think like they, they made them. There's an emphasis for us to use them. They didn't pay all that money, for because there's nobody writing on them right now. But I think that they made them so that they would, we would use them. And he even says in these pamphlets how they make an emphasis on getting people out of their cars and on the bus, um, bu buses, bicycles, you know, um, walking. Uh, I mean, that's going to be a hoot with a freaking um, older age person trying to ride a cycle out there in a in 110 degree, in 103 degrees heat in a three degrees in a three level smog alert. You know, you're going to have cardiac arrests all over the place. Not to mention kids and parents and stuff trying to get places with you. What if you have a a baby, a one-year-old, and a two-year-old, you know? I just don't think that a lot of these uh, transportation plans are going to work for the average citizens, and I've talked to a lot of citizens, and they also said that, they, that no, this doesn't work for them. And so I just don't understand, like, they put them up, they didn't even ask anybody. 
in this city what what they wanted for their transportation plans because it seems like everybody's happy driving around in cars you know and i don't think that anybody has any plans in changing that so i just think it's a lot of money to put out that could have spent in other areas we have a lot of people who are homeless what are we doing for them you know we should be put doing rehabilitation trying to get these people back on the streets not descending them and chasing them out of everywhere because everybody is somebody's baby and created in somebody's they had a plan you didn't have children so that they could be treated like trash i'm sure you know so i'm just thinking that we need to think more about that think about what we're planning on money our money for and if the people really actually want these things you know because what in my consistence in, in my consensus I have uh, determined that no, that people aren't wanting these things. So it would just be good if, if we could have, uh, you know, just more dialogue, you know, and, uh, and stuff like that. Maybe we can get some, some kind of voting or consensus going or, or something like that. So, um, you know, whatever your thoughts are, I think I'm, I'm, I'm done for okay. now. Okay, so thank you for your comments. Thank you, thank you for letting me speak. <coughs> thank you. Just to clarify, though, that the $6 million wasn't spent on the bike lanes. It was spent on the whole road project, the whole road project. So just so you're aware, it wasn't $6 million just for that. Okay, so Chris? Oh, nothing further, thank you. And I am going to, I'll call you tomorrow morning, but I'm going to try to attend tomorrow night. Okay. okay. I plan on being okay. Chief? My only uh, couple comments. We've been working closely with both school districts on uh, school safety initiatives. Um, most of my staff have been working on it uh, directly with their staff. We had a big uh, meeting with the elementary school district with all of their uh, principals and, uh, and management there at the police department last week. And uh, I also met the new superintendent for the high school district also. Um, so great dialogue about way, uh, making sure that the schools are safe. Uh, on the day of school, uh, we will have a, an employee or an officer in, uh, at every single school in the city on the very first day. Uh, so that's taking place also. Uh, and then finally, uh, National Night Out is tonight, uh, my favorite night of the year. And uh, so all of you that are going to be there uh, the briefing starts uh, sharply at 5.30 uh, at the police department. We need to sh start it right at 5.30 because we have to be at our first site um, at uh, 6 o'clock. So. Okay. Cora, I'm sorry. I kind of moved on. <laughs> Cora. Armando. I just wanted to notify council that uh, the sprinklers have been installed at uh, SP Park. So, Mark, if you have any more green paint, you can just paint the grass there until we can get it green for you guys. Um, and that's that was just a big project that came through that uh, a lot of the citizens had made comments on and I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware that by the end of this month it should be green and ready to go again. That's a really drought tolerant uh, grass, isn't it? Yeah, it's a native grass. It, it's made to, to go hybrid uh, during the summer and it'll come back green as soon as water hits it. Yeah, so, we yeah, so it's not sod where we it. killed it or have to add more seed to it. It'll just come right back. Low maintenance. Yes. Great. Jean? Further. Sub, uh, Ashley? <laughs> I don't have any updates, thank you. Okay. Kurt, anything else? No. Uh, Paige? So like I said, the safety committee voted um, to bring that to you guys, so if you want to put it on the agenda. And also, um, back to the league, should I be the alternative, since I'm going to, just in case you get food poisoning or something, you never know. <laughs> that's, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine, that's fine. Tom? Don't let me forget. <laughs> Stop sign policy. Stop sign policy? Yeah, if we could bring that back and a staff report on it and see if we want to do anything with it. A lot of cities do have uh, stop sign policies for a stop sign requests. It goes through the whole process, whether it's warranted, everything. So, you know, whether it's a condition of approval, subdivision map, or whatever. And uh, the neat thing about it is we're already doing a lot of that stuff, but it's tribal knowledge. So this kind of forms it up into a policy. And uh, I mean, uh, 
staff gets to write it. Yeah, Mayor, Mayor and Council, if I, if I may, on that, uh, both those topics, the uh, Public Safety Committee is an advisory committee. They made uh, two recommendations or voted on two recommendations um, to move that on the council. So it's you know, reported out at council level uh, in order for staff, you know, for me to give direction to do some work on that. I'd like consensus of the council to, uh, you know, proceed and move forward to, you know, put a staff report together and bring that back to the council. The two items uh, were the stop sign policy. That is a, um, you know, something that we already do, uh, uh, Mr. Clarkson. Uh, receives a lot of stop sign requests. We have a process that we go through. A policy would formalize, you know, our process, kind of like a standard operating procedure for staff. Uh, the other item, uh, which was apparently discussed several times at the public safety meeting, was, uh, um, I guess, yield signs or stop signs at the intersection. Um, on 4th Street. Uh, staff. Pedestrian warning signs. At Pedestrian there. warning signs, thank you. Uh, staff uh, made a recommendation uh, against you know, uh, that recommendation, but the, the uh, Public Safety Committee wanted to move that forward with a recommendation to council uh, to have staff you know, bring that, you know, basically do a staff report and, and analyze that and bring that back to council for discussion. So before I, I move forward to do any work, I'd, I'd like direction from the council. Did staff do a report previously for the committee? I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Clarkson because I was not at all of the committee meetings. I think it was discussed three times. I was just at the last one. Well, we kind of did an informal report. We did traffic, a traffic survey out there, a speed survey, and then did some pedestrian surveys out there and then just brought, brought those uh, results to the traffic committee. And I guess it wasn't warranted is what, you're, is what the staff's thinking was? Correct. Okay. And my concern with it is if we actually, if council, I guess it's in council's lap now, decides to do that, if we set some um, policy for the future on, on you know, precedent or other uh, pedestrian crossings, because you can drive around in those blocks and I can count probably six, eight, ten that are in the same exactly the same situation so yeah, right. you know so I mean that that's my concern is we do something like that do we start putting on you know open the door to unwarranted exactly um, pedestrian crossings all over and, and what what the exposure to the city is when we do something like that so that that would have to be part of the part of the staff report so they were thinking because it is a high um, use area during special events right in front of velvet grill just a little hey there's a crosswalk here because it's brick and it's not painted so sometimes you don't see it and it's at a T. Yeah that's kind of where not I'm coming from. If yeah. you can if you can somehow justify it for the warrants or everything else where it doesn't set a precedent for all over the place then it's one of the options. Yeah. I, well I think it's it sounds to me something like uh, I understand the policy coming back to us and let's looking at the policy. I personally I mean it's not staff decide I mean, that's a staff recommendation regarding where signage should be. It's council's job to do policy. So if we start now getting into deciding where signage should be on every street or, you know, somebody wants a stop sign in front of their house or somebody wants, I think we need a laid out policy. So I would absolutely agree with Tom that's to direct staff to bring us back a policy regarding placement and so that we follow that policy. And if that, if this, if Fourth Street falls into that policy, then so be it. If it falls outside of that policy, then you know that staff have a procedure and policy that they follow, and that we don't it, it maybe start is, deciding yeah. where stop signs go and where stop signs don't go because staff does have a, pol a procedure that they follow regarding that. Well, the pedestrian signs are the are the. So there, there the were two issues. Question. The committee voted to bring it to, to council. Yeah. So we're yeah. asking you guys if you want, yeah. if you'd like to look at it. Yeah. That's their job is to advise. Because there, there may be, there may, you know, we may as a council be able to have some findings to make that situation special enough to warrant it. But, you know, we ought to do it formally through a staff report and get mm -hmm. all the facts. So. I guess what I'd like to see first is us to bring forward the policy so that we're aware of what the policy is before we bring forward an issue making a decision regarding pedestrian signs that we first bring forward, the, that staff bring forward a staff report regarding the policy. 
so that we understand the procedure that's being followed and why staff make that recommendation. But we're not asking for a stop sign. So, this, so there's two issues. Two issues. Stop sign and then stop pedestrian sign policy and then the, the pedestrian sign. They, they took two votes. Old town. But doesn't that, does it, okay, so you. It's two, two separate items. Okay, so Mark, do you have a policy, I mean, do you have a procedure you follow regarding any signage? I mean, is there, I mean, maybe included in that staff report is regarding maybe the vehicle signage or street signage? We did not present that to the traffic uh, committee as far as the um, a, a policy. We do not have a policy in place for the, um, for putting up signs, you know, warning signs and such like that. We follow the engineering, you know, MUT, MUTCD and other standards to, to determine if things are needed or not, if there's special consideration. But we don't have a formal policy. We went through that several times. I had myself and, and two other people went through it too on this particular one. But, but um, uh, you know, policy could be uh, written up on, on general signs, safety signs. Would having a written policy like that save you time? Save, save staff, staff time. I mean, I, I, I don't know how often you get requests similar to this, but um, if you're going through having to do a calculation or research on every one of them, um, it would seem that maybe a policy could help you. I don't know. I, I think the policy could work both ways. It could help on some ends, but on other times, you know, in a policy you generally will have, and if you don't like the answer here, you can go here, you know, type of thing. So, so it, it, it may or may not, you know, I, I don't see anything against a policy. You know, I, I mean, it's, it puts every in a playing field. So we aren't setting precedents and we can't say, well, it works here or, or it accepts a policy here. So we can do it over here too. You know, I mean, it, it acts as a, a positive for, for our traffic flow and stuff. So. And lawyers probably like it that way, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Ask legal counsel. <laughs> Do we have a consensus? Do we want to bring back? Do we want staff to bring back a policy regarding safety signage or what? I think it was stop sign procedures. Stop sign. Stop sign. It is oh, what the terminology was at the at the public safety meeting. Yeah, as as Commissioner uh, Molson said, or Council Member Molson said that. There's two items. One is a stop sign policy, and the mm -hmm. other is, a, is the safety pedestrian, or we'll just say safety signage, general safety signage. So moved. Second. What? I'm unclear on the direction. So you're moving for what? I think we're just putting it on the agenda to <laughs> That's what we're asking. What I have so far is a safety signage policy and also a stop sign policy. No. No. Stop so. sign policy and then they're requesting crosswalk signs on 4th Street. That's what the safety committee is su suggesting. Yep. Crosswalk signs right in front of then, okay, Velvet Grill and, and Barsetti. So we're talking about a staff report evaluating right. the safety signage. Okay. Okay. So we're requests so of the so the motion, we're unclear. So the motion is to bring back a stop sign policy and a staff report. A staff report evaluating the safety signage right. at that particular location. Can we on make Fourth a motion? Street. That's so not, please drive um, down Fourth Street and go check it out. I think it could be a consensus just to have staff bring it back. I don't think we can put make it as a motion. Is that not correct? Doesn't need. We're giving direction. Well. To the extent the motion is giving further direction, I think it's okay. You're not actually really taking an action on the item, but um, if you want for a clear consensus to take a motion on what the direction is, I think that's okay. Okay. So we can make it real clear and <laughs> do two motions. One motion would be for the stop sign policy, which Okay, is do we have consensus time? regarding placing on the item for the stop sign yes. policy? Yes, okay. We have consensus, okay. We have consensus one. regarding the item of Sa the crosswalk. It's safety signage on 4th and D Street. Do we want that brought back as a policy, as a staff report, or do we want it? Staff report. Staff report? Yes. I would consensus with a staff report regarding staff report. the safety signage. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Clear as mud. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. No, no, no. I, I what? Oh, it's Mark's turn. Oh, he drug okay, it on. Mark. He took oh, all the time. Okay. <laughs> H took it. Play me, play me. <laughs>
No, Go actually, ahead, actually, I'm going to go back to what you mentioned before, the wildlife preparedness and, and response. The way I read this, this is kind of time sensitive, and they're asking for letters of opposition from the city. Um, this is one of those kind of sticky areas where it wasn't on the agenda, but if we have a consensus, can we not have our city manager uh, pen such a letter and have the mayor sign it? For back to our attorney on that one, I haven't reviewed you know, what the league has sent, uh, so I don't know. Uh, basically, in general, they're asking for uh, let's see, uh, city letters urging no change to the standards of inverse condemnation to the conference rosters or, and copy to your legislators. So basically what they're asking is to send a letter out saying, uh -uh, we don't want this. And point in fact is the first meeting that they're meeting is today. The second one's actually on Thursday. So it's kind of extremely time sensitive. So what are you, I don't know what you're requesting. It's just a letter of pop. They're asking for letters of opposition from the individual cities regarding this, this item. It's got to go before the legislature anyway, but they just want to know where the city stands. Can the council give staff direction to write a letter in opposition of whatever? I don't know if it's a assembly bill or it, it's at right Senate now. Bill. It's sitting in the assembly, and you've got assembly, uh, assembly members and senators both on this on this subcommittee. Um, I'm. I feel like. It's a little bit like taking action on on writing a letter of opposition that's not on the agenda. Um, I think we actually have, even though the league made it sound very, why don't we bring it back, uh, bring the letter back to the next meeting. I would feel uh, more comfortable that way. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, you know, the, directing staff to bring back a letter um, in opposition for, for review at the next meeting. Staff and council have ch a chance to have reviewed the legislation, to have reviewed what it, what the league's recommending. I, I think even though they're having the two meetings this week, even talking to Mr. Costa from PG&E, it sounded as if they had, there is some time. The governor has um, made a, a committee to look into the issue, but that there was a little bit of time. So we could probably have two we you know, the, until our next meeting. Yeah, Mr. Costa mentioned that they were meeting, you know, twice a week for the next, you know, several weeks on this item. So I don't know if it's going to, you know, how quickly it'll move or not. So maybe we staff could bring back a letter at the next meeting. They can bring back an update next meeting. Absolutely. As long as it uh, works in, in favor of those those communities who are adversely affected by this, yes. Oh, we think we would all be affected by it. <laughs> well, it, 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 to be honest. Wildfires in, in Galt, mm, not much of an issue unless Dry Creek lights up. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, we burned down two sides of 99 again. <laughs> sure. So, anyway, and just uh, in closing, if we can all keep the firefighters in our in our thoughts and prayers, it's it's uh, unprecedented. We're having a rough time. So, thank you very much. Meeting adjourned. See you tonight, 5:30 on the dot.